The internet is not a cloud. It's a collection of privately owned and managed routers, fiber optics, and servers. The internet is really a network of networks and is changing a lot of business models. It's changing how we watch TV and movies. Consider these developments. In January of 2005, YouTube didn't even exist. Now, users are downloading 100 million YouTube videos a day. Netflix currently mails 1.4 million DVDs every day. They're going to start sending their movies over the internet. Walmart accounts for 40% of all DVDs sold in America. They're going to start delivering movies over the internet too. Xbox 360 users can download high-definition movies directly to their console. And Amazon has a new service called Unbox that lets you rent and watch movies over the internet. Apple's iTunes store now sells TV shows and movies over the internet. And they have a new device to beam them to your TV. Sony just released a TV that connects directly to the internet. And don't forget Slingbox. They let you watch programs from your TV and DVR remotely. You guessed it, over the internet. And there's a lot of other applications streaming video. There's some not so desired inventions too. Spam doubled last year, and spammers have started using JPEGs to get around text filters. So messages have gotten a lot bigger. And spam isn't the only unwelcome traffic on the networks. On February 6th, hackers tried to bring down the internet by attacking DNS servers. The attack lasted 12 hours and briefly crippled two of the 13 root servers. But due to the resiliency of the network, the attack was beaten back. Movies, video, spam, and other uses are clearly driving more traffic on the net. But how much traffic? Let's put things into perspective. Downloading a high-definition movie takes more bandwidth than viewing 35,000 web pages. It's like downloading 2,300 songs from the iTunes Music Store. Internet pioneers are wondering if the internet can handle it. Research analysts have concerns. Even Google is worried. They don't think the internet is ready. Soon, the internet will need to handle exabytes of traffic. That's a thousand petabytes or one billion gigabytes. Technology leaders are calling it the exaflood. Is it a bad thing? Should we be worried? No. It means the internet is growing up, fulfilling its potential. The exaflood is only a problem if we're not prepared for it. So how do we get ready? We need to upgrade the infrastructure of the internet. Backbone providers are spending billions upgrading from OC48 to OC192. And they're working on OC768, which will be even bigger, faster, and more expensive. And we need to upgrade the critical local access infrastructure from homes to the internet. Local providers right now are spending tens of billions of dollars to deploy fiber to the home and other deep fiber networks. Soon, they'll be able to offer 100 megabit per second internet access. Services 50 times faster than today. And 1 gigabit services are on the drawing board. But it won't be enough to keep up. The internet is growing exponentially. We need new innovations in network technology. Smart networks can help manage traffic congestion and make sure time-sensitive data packets don't get delayed or lost. And researchers need to keep working on compression technology to make the content smaller and the quality better. Research and innovation must continue both at the edge and in the core of the network. To get the internet ready for the exaflood, we need to make sure there are no artificial barriers to investment and innovation on the network. Smarter networks also mean more customized services for content providers. A company delivering a movie to a customer or an online gaming network can choose to buy special services that enhance their customer's experience. This way, those companies and customers that most directly benefit pay for that benefit. That's a better solution than raising everyone's monthly rates and making people pay for services they don't use. It's important to make sure consumers don't get stuck with the whole bill for upgrading the internet. Why? Because lower monthly broadband rates means more families can afford high-speed internet connections. More people can be part of the high-speed internet revolution. And that's a good thing. We need to find ways to continue network improvements without leaving anyone behind. There's a lot of work to be done and a lot of decisions to be made. Will the internet be ready for the exaflood? We'll see.